And uh, in this way, in this way, it, well, you know what, it's some people, but you know what, isn't everybody annoying? I mean, at some point, I mean, everybody's just difficult at some point. And if they're not now, they're going to be, right? So marriage and committed relationships form a really special bond between two people. The question I want to ask is, how much should we do for our partner in the sense of caring for them and taking care of them versus you know, doing too much? So where's the line? Well, I can speak from my own marriage. Uh, my husband has healed me in so many ways by just being admiring and sweet and giving to me and I it's very easy to give back and I never feel either one of us are codependent which mm -hmm. is what we're avoiding uh, the, right I get right. that yeah right. but I, it's it's a wonderful wonderful thing to be able to give that give and take that kind of relationship and it can be very healing yeah I think as long as you are taking care of yourself so if you're not neglecting yourself then being generous to your partner is a beautiful thing and, and could create more closeness. I think the fine line or what you want to keep an eye on is that you're not neglecting yourself in order to, to um, do for your partner. And also in, in a lot of cases, if your partner may not want you to do that for them, that should be, that's a, they, they are, they're allowed to have that boundary. If they feel that it's too much, then that's, that's again, something that, that needs to be looked at. So if it's agreed upon and it's mutual and you're taking care of yourself, then the more you can do for each other really enhances the relationship. Some of us therapist types need to be helpful and get a lot of meaning out of it. It's very valuable to us. But on the other hand, I know when I get stressed out, sometimes I really need to be helpful and you better receive it and appreciate it. How much I'm helpful. The other side of it too is is there are signals you can can feel uh, if you know you're feeling resentful, if you know you're drinking more than you should because you're giving more than you've got, your battery's pack is empty, then pay attention, see see what you need to do and what you need from your partner. One more thing in terms of couples who are going through one of their major physical crisis, I, I'm thinking of several that I know who sometimes lose themselves so completely to that. And my wife and I have really tried to create a contract with each other that we know we will call in a lot of help before we will push each other to that point. Because we want us both to be behind ourselves as, the, as well as being there for the, know that we can count on the other. I think the airlines figured it out. They said, put your oxygen mask on first. <laughs> well. Yes, you put your okay. Yeah, no, no, no. That's it. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you you put your oxygen mask on first um, for the other person, the child, because if you're dead, your child is not going to live, right? But children's brains can last longer with a, a low oxygen, <laughs> so it's really good to put your faith. But um, um, but this this idea of you know who's giving what and how much in Wire for Love, we we talk about attachment types, islands, anchors, and waves, and. You know, culturally speaking, islands, you know, uh, do not like to give a lot and have a low footprint in terms of, uh, you know, let's not give you anything for Christmas. You won't give me anything. This way we don't own, we don't owe each other anything. Um, and that's their sort of their quid pro quo. Let's just not do anything. And waves, of course, are more like codependents where the uh, they're externally focused and either I've got to do for you or I'm waiting for it to be done to me and so on. Secure functioning relationships really are two-person psychological systems based on true mutuality. Therefore, we agree that we're going to do these things for each other. And when we don't, we invoke a phrase like, I thought this is what we do, or I thought we don't do this. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of fairness, justice, and sensitivity makes people who would be codependent demand more, expect more. People who are more avoidant be allowed to be that, but, but also they have to buy in, they have to pay in, and they also have to make demands. Rather than people being less demanding, I think people should be more demanding, be a bigger pain in the ass, which is what people are anyway. And uh, in this way, in this way, it, well, you know what, it's some people, but you know what, isn't everybody annoying? I mean, at some point, I mean, everybody's difficult at some point, and if they're not now, they're going to be, right? 
in a couple system, I think it's better that people make demands rather than reduce them, increase them. And that's the quid pro, pro quo, right? We do these things because nobody else wants to do them. And I think that's what you've got. And I think that's what you've got. I know that's what I've got. I think you have that, don't you? <laughs> so to sum this up, it sounds like for a person entering a marriage or in a committed relationship, if they're looking to like soar that up, the thing they need to know is that you can never give too much, provided that that's how your partner wants to receive your gifts, right? And that there is a piece of awareness that each person has to have about what they need and what they want to give. And being counting doesn't work. You can't keep score. Yeah.